Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to maximize Divi's mobile viewports using rotated copy. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. We are going to call this views, click on use Divi Builder. And for this design, we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Right, so the first thing we're going to do here is to go into our section settings and add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to design, spacing, and for our padding, we're going to add zero, both to the top and the bottom. Now it's time to add our rows. So I'm going to save, click here on this plus button, and the column structure we're going to go with is this one here, one third, two thirds. I'm going to select that. Now let's head over now to our row settings. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, click on design, sizing. And the first thing we're going to do here is to activate use custom gutter width. And uh, we're going to reduce the space between the columns and leave there with nothing. And so we're going to set this to one. Next, we're going to come over here to equalize column heights and set this to yes. So we want to make sure that our content fills all the space. Next, we're going to come over here to our width and set this to uh, 100%. And for our maximum width, we're going to set this to 50%. Now, while we're here for the desktop and tablet, we are going to uh, set this to 100%. So I'm going to click here on tablet and set this to 100%. And the same goes for the mobile. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go to my row alignment and set this to left. Now let's go into spacing because we are going to set our padding. And we're going to set this to zero, both for the top and the bottom. And what we're going to do as well is to add a bit of CSS to make sure all our content is centered. So I'm going to come over here to advanced, custom CSS, and in the main element, I'm going to add this code. Now I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below where you can find that code. All right, so now that we have this all set, we are going to go back to content and go into the first column. So I'm going to click here on this little gear icon. And uh, what we're going to do now is to add an animation style. So I'm going to click here on design, click on animation. And the style we're going to go with is fade. And we're just going to leave the defaults here at uh, 1000 milliseconds. Now we also need to add a bit of CSS for this. So we're going to come over here to advanced custom CSS, and in the main element, we are going to add this CSS code. So let's go back, and this time we're going to go into column two, and we're going to do the same as well. We're going to click here on design, animation, and we're also going to choose fade, just like how we did before. So I'm going to select it, and for our animation delay, this is going to be slightly different. We're going to set this to 200 milliseconds, and we also have some CSS code to add in here. So I'm going to click on advanced, custom CSS, and I'm going to add it in this main element. Now it's time to add our images. So I'm going to save, save one more time. So we are now going to add our image to column two. So I'm going to click on this plus button, search for my image module and select it. I want to click anywhere in here. And I already have uh, images in my media library, but if you want to copy what I'm doing right now, you can use these dimensions, which are 844 by 1000 pixels. I'm going to click upload image. So in your case, just add an image which uh, works with your design. Next, I'm going to come over here to design, and then I'm going to click on sizing and set to force full width, and then save. Next, I'm going to come over here to column one. Now you're going to notice that uh, we can't add our column one here because it's covered by the row settings. So I'm going to click on these three little dots here to expand settings and then click on uh, my layers. So what I'm going to do now is to go into my row and what I need to do is to go to column one. So I'm going to click on this gear icon to go into my settings. And now I can click on this plus button to add my module. And the module I'm going to add is a text module. Uh, so I'm going to search for it and select it. So in here, I'm going to add handmade earrings. I'm going to uh, set this to heading two. So I'm going to highlight it, click on this drop down, and set it to heading two. Now let's go in and customize the heading text. So I'm going to click here on design, heading text, making sure I've selected heading two. We are going to add our heading font, and it's going to be monster rat. So here it is. Our font weight is going to be light. Our text alignment, center. Our color is going to be black. 
and our size is going to be 3VW. And for our spacing, we're going to set this to minus 3. Now here on the text size, I'm going to click on this little icon to go into my tablet view. So in the tablet view, we need to set this to 50 pixels. In the phone, it's going to be 40 pixels. So it's important that you go in and uh, customize all your views. Okay, so now that we have that all set, we are now going to go into our sizing. So what we're going to do here is to set our width at 89%. And for the tablets, we're going to set this to 150%. Same applies here for the phone as well. And then we're just going to go back to desktop. So what we're going to do next is to go to transform rotate. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here, click on transform, click on transform rotate. So what we need to change here is 270 degrees here. And you can see now that my text is now facing that way. Now we're going to go to advanced, click on position, and we're going to set this to absolute and choose bottom center. So now we're going to go to our vertical offset and set this to 50 pixels and then save. So next we're going to add a divider to column one. I'm going to select it. So let's go now into the design, click on line and for our line color, we're going to set that to black. And now let's go to sizing and here we're going to uh, set our width at 50%. Now let's go to our position. So I'm going to click advanced position and this is going to be absolute. And this is also going to center right. So pretty much this is our design. I'm going to go ahead and save. So next we're going to add our second column. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and the column structure we're going to go with is slightly different. We're going to go with one quarter and um, three quarters. Now let's go into our sizing. So what we're going to do here is we are going to activate our custom cutter width like what we did before. And uh, we're going to set this to one. Next, we are going to equalize column heights. And for our width, we're going to set this to 100%. And for our maximum width, we're going to set this to 50%. And for the roll alignment, we're going to set this to the right. Now, let's add our spacing. So I'm going to come over here and set this to zero, both to the top and the bottom. Now, it's time to add our CSS. So I'm going to click Advanced, Custom CSS, and add my CSS in here. Now, let's go into our column one settings. So I'm going to start off by clicking this gear icon. And let's add a background gradient. So I'm going to click on background, click on the second tab. So we are going to now start adding our colors. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And for my first color, I'm going to paste it in here. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so for our second color, this is going to be black. So I'm going to go ahead and select black. And for my gradient direction, now, before we add the direction, make sure that it's set to linear. And uh, this is going to be 153. Next, we're going to go to our animation. So I'm going to click here on design. Click on animation. And uh, we're going to choose fade as well. But this time, our animation delay is going to be 400. And we also need to add some CSS. So we're going to come over here to advanced, custom CSS. And in the main element, we're going to paste it in here. But like I said, if you want to use the exact CSS that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so visibility, we need to hide our overflow. So I'm going to come over here, change this to hidden, and I'm also going to do the same on the vertical. So I'm going to set those two to hidden. Next, we're going to go to our column two settings. So I'm going to click here to go back, click on the gear icon to go to column two, and then I'm going to click here on background and paste my color. So I'm going to paste it in here. And now it's time to go to animation. So I'm going to click on design animation. You want to choose fade. But uh, this time our animation delay is going to be 600 milliseconds. Now let's add our CSS. So I'm going to come over here to advanced custom CSS. And I'm going to paste my CSS code in here. All right, so let's go ahead now and save. And in column two, we are going to add a text module. So I'm going to search for it. I'm going to select this and I'm going to paste my text like that. Now let's go into the design tab, click on text. So first of all, we need to change our font here to open sans. So I'm going to search for it. And by the way, these are free fonts, so you can go ahead and use these. 
Uh, these are free Google fonts. So for our text size, I want to set this to 15. And for our line height, I'm going to set this to 2.4. Now we are going to come over here to sizing because we want our width to be uh, about 80%. So let's go ahead and add 80% in here. And for our module alignment, it's going to be centered. Now, when we take a look at our design here, we need some breathing space around our text. So let's add a bit of padding here on spacing. So we're going to add it both to the top and the bottom and then save. Now it's time to add a button over here on column two. So I'm going to click on this plus button and here is my button module. So on this button, we're going to say discover and make sure you add your button link over here. So I'm just going to add a blank link for now. And then over here on the design, we're going to go to alignment and click on center because we want our button here to be centered. Now let's customize our button settings. So to do that, we want to come over here to button and then activate use custom styles for button. So let's start with our button text color. So this is going to be black. Our button background color is going to be white. So let's go ahead and add that. Button border width is going to be zero. By default, it's set to two. So I'm just going to drag the slider down. Our button border radius is also going to be zero. And by default, it's set to three. Now let's uh, add our font. So our font here is going to be Monsterat. Here it is because we used this before. So show icon. I'm going to say yes. And our icon placement is going to be to the left. So let's go ahead and do that. So only show icon on hover for button. We're going to say no. And the icon we're going to choose is this one right here. But you, of course, you can choose whatever icon you want. Now, this button here does not have enough breathing space around it. So let's do that by coming over here to our padding. And uh, we are going to start with our top and bottom padding. We're going to set this to 2%, both to the top and the bottom. And then left and right is going to be 10%. There we go. So now the button looks much better. So let's go ahead and save. And over here, we need to add a text module to column one. So I'm going to click on this plus button, search for my text module and select it. And all we're going to add here is zero one. And let's also add a dash here. Now let's go to our text settings by clicking on design text. So let's change our font to monster at our font weight. We're going to set this to thin. We're going to set this to white. Now let's set our size to 50 pixels. And for our text alignment here, we are going to center it. Now let's head over here to sizing. And this is where we need to set our width to 150%. And let's go now to transform and let's select transform translate. So what we need to do while we're in this option, we're going to click on this little icon because the value we're going to add in here is only for our tablets and mobile phones. So I'm going to set this to minus 50 and we're going to do the same here as well. But on the desktop, we're going to leave it as it is. Now let's go to transform rotate and this needs to be for the tablets and phone only as well. So I'm going to set it over here. Click on the phone, make sure it's set to 270 as well. Now let's head over to advanced and then click on position. So here we need to set this to absolute. So our location is going to be center. And then we're going to save. So I'm going to switch back over here to my desktop view. So here is our design so far. So what we need to do now is if you want to uh, add more of these designs, you can just clone this by coming over here. So now I've cloned my design. We have more here on the bottom. So you can just go in and change the images change the text. So you can see here that uh, this is what it looks like when it's on the desktop, but uh, on the mobile, it's going to be facing that way. Same applies here with this text. So you can just go in and change the text here and the images to have your final design. And once you go in and change those, the final design should look like this. So this is the desktop. And the moment that we change this, you're going to notice now that it's going to flip over and this is now facing the other way. But this is happening on the uh, screen size.
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.